Usually, the workflow of most digital artists revolves around a few key steps. We start with a sketch. Next up is a, a refined sketch or maybe a line art. Then it's time for the flats, the shadows, and uh, maybe in the end a bit of rendering and uh, some post-processing tricks. But what if I told you that I made this entire illustration without a sketch? It's the result of uh, a new process, like a new workflow I tried implementing. So in this video I kind of wanted to share it, and uh, at the end I'll also briefly mention all of the pros and cons. So yeah, uh, let's jump right in. Now, when starting this piece, I already had a bunch of sketches of uh, the character I was going to portray. But the first step of this workflow is actually to make a thumbnail. And I'm not talking about those grayscale thumbnails you've probably seen already. The kind of thumbnail I'm talking about is something I learned from the book Framed Ink, which I've read cover to cover in like two days. Basically, what you do is you take your canvas and you just divide it into either black or white to kind of give a general read of what the final composition is going to be. This whole thing takes less than three minutes. For my illustration, I wanted the character to be the main focus and I wanted all of the other elements of the composition to separate and give space to the main focus of the image. This was a very simple thing to do, like as I've said, it took just a couple minutes, but from that decision, the tone of the entire illustration was clear already. So yeah, uh, that would be the, the first step. For the second step, I don't really have a name yet, but what you do is you just basically make the flats and the shadows without having anything to go off of. You're just going to decide where to put certain colors and where to put certain light areas and shadow areas. Sometimes it can be useful to just make a layer on top of everything with the multiply and uh, sketch out the general idea of what you want to depict. This way it will be much easier to understand how the light interacts with everything and make the most aesthetic shapes possible just to then remove the sketch again and uh, have a very clean result. It was kind of a lie when I said that I didn't make a sketch, but the point I'm trying to get across is the fact that what really matters are the shapes. Now, let's talk about the third step, something a lot of people really obsess about, which is the details. So, in the first step, we place down the shapes that were going to become the foundation of a... Uh, the entire piece, the very big shapes, the very big separations between light and shadow and like the main subjects. In the second step we went a bit more in depth and gave more attention to the medium shapes. All of the volumes had to be well defined, the lighting had to be well defined and uh, some main colors had to be laid down. The key principle and the most important thing to keep in mind throughout all this is just to make shapes that look good together, create a nice read and a, a nice picture in its entirety. And when working on details, we're actually not doing something very different from just that, making shapes that look good. The only difference is that we're doing it on such a small scale, people just don't make the connection that it's basically the same thing. After recording this, I'll probably make a couple examples of uh, how to render or like make details for a drop of water or like a bunch of scratches on uh, a metal. Because if you zoom in, it's just a simplification into shapes, just like anything else. So that's the way to get the details down. Now, I'm not very big on details myself. Uh, if you look at my pieces, you'll probably see that I tend to be done with them before getting down to the very small and like uh, tedious details because it's a part that I don't really enjoy so like for me this level of detail is good enough. And uh, finally the last step would be to give everything a polished look with some post-processing tricks, maybe using some uh, gradients to give the whole piece a bit more coherence, either in the form of uh, general shadows or like general lights. 
maybe blurring a lot of areas of the piece or using tone curves to accentuate the contrast a bit. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. To wrap things up, let's briefly cover the pros and cons of working this way. Starting from the cons. So the biggest one, in my opinion, and uh, also the biggest drawback I've had when trying to implement this kind of work in the past without succeeding, of course, is that it's super difficult to get into this mindset of working only with shapes if you're used to drawing and simplifying anything into lines. And the second one would be that this kind of workflow isn't really ideal if you're working for someone else. Let's say you're working for a a client or you have a contract for some kind of company. In that case, if they have to give you feedback on every single step of your process and like often when you're working for someone, they're going to have corrections to make. When using this method, if someone wants you to change something, it's uh, quite complicated. And you might be thinking, oh, like uh, the negatives heavily outweigh the positives. There isn't really a lot of good reasons why I should be using this method. And I think that it's still worth it because there is one positive, in my opinion, that outweighs all of the negatives, which is that when using this method, you have absolute freedom about what you're doing. The reason this works so well once you understand it and uh, also the reason why it ultimately looks good, like, come on, it looks good, uh, (laughs) is that the language of shapes is the closest one to how we see things in real life. You get to a point where you're conveying what a person would actually see as if they were there. There is not the simplification of lines being used anywhere in this method so it really speaks to the eye in a in a way that's pleasant to see which ultimately just gives you a very cool illustration overall i would recommend it to people who are willing to try something new and uh, be open to it the warning is that it's very difficult if you're already used to drawing and uh, that kind of stuff Also, it's not like I will be using this method from now on for every single piece. I will still be experimenting around and uh, trying out new stuff. So maybe in a week from now, I'll come back and say that this is all trash. But till then, I think this is pretty neat. And uh, if you try it, I hope you have fun with it. If this video was useful, consider leaving a like, subscribe, leave a comment. You know the drill. See ya.